Hi, I'm Dan McKean, and I'm MongoDB's Kubernetes product manager. This is a demo running through the quick start guide for deploying a MongoDB replica set across multiple Kubernetes clusters using the MongoDB Enterprise Kubernetes operator. The quick start can be found at this URL, and if following along to the demo, I recommend following the quick start for the latest information. Before we dive in, a quick look at what we'll be building. Firstly, in the top left, the operator will be hosted in what we call the central cluster. In this case, we won't be hosting any replica set members in that central cluster. Instead, they'll all be in one of the three member clusters within the service mesh below. The quick start walks you through the basic usage of Istio service mesh to connect together the three member clusters. It's entirely possible to use any other service mesh or none at all. The only requirement is that the pods of the deployment are able to reach each other cross clusters using their host names. If you did want to host replica set members within the central cluster alongside the operator, that would require that Istio or whatever alternative solution you used was set up to include that central cluster. In each of the clusters below, we have a multi-cluster role and a multi-cluster service account. Both are critical to grant the operator the permissions needed to interface with the API of the Kubernetes clusters and create stateful sets which are used to manage the deployed MongoDB replica set members in that cluster. As always with the MongoDB Enterprise Operator, either Cloud Manager or Ops Manager is required. For this demo, I've opted to use Cloud Manager. Ops Manager is a more common choice for our customers. Cloud Manager is just slightly simpler to use without compromising the demo or the guidance of the quick start. Now let's dive in. The quick start guidance walks you through a deployment from start to finish in GKE, Google Kubernetes Engine. There's a few prerequisite tasks to get started, the first of which is cloning the repo to your machine. I've already done this ahead of time, so we can skip this. Next, we need to define several variables that will be used throughout the deployment. These include the name of the GKE project that we're going to use, each cluster's intended name and availability zone, and concatenated variables which store each cluster's full name. Then we need to create the clusters in GKE. You need to have a GCP account already and have run through the GCP Quick Start to install and initiate the GCloud CLI. I've done both already, but I've also already created the clusters as they take a little while to spin up. So we'll skip that for now. Now we fetch from GCloud the credentials we need on our local machine to allow us to connect to these new GKE clusters using kubectl, which is the Kubernetes command line tool. Once complete, we're able to run kubectl commands on the various clusters. Next, we install Istio service mesh, which links together the clusters. Here, we're going to use a script our team has provided in the enterprise operator Git repository. While this script is included in the quick start and should be fine when following the guide, it's highly recommended that you review the script and familiarize yourself with what this installation of Istio is doing. There are comments in the script and links to the official Istio docs in our quick start guide. For each cluster installation, Istio will ask you to confirm the installation by entering Y, and then it will wait for an IP address to be assigned for the individual cluster. Once the installation is fully complete, Istio will be installed on each of the three member clusters. This does take a few minutes, so we're gonna skip ahead. Once Istio is completed installing, there is an optional step of verifying the connectivity between pods. A quick start walks you through the installation of a super simple application that spans the clusters, which you can then curl to. This validates the connectivity. I'm not gonna cover this here, but I do recommend this under normal circumstances, much better to work out at this stage if Istio is working as expected. Next comes use of the MongoDB multi-cluster cube control or kubectl plugin. The plugin is a binary available on repo and just needs to be installed into your path so that it can be picked up in your terminal. The plugin does a few things. Creates a single MongoDB namespace in the central cluster and each other cluster. Creates service accounts, roles and role bindings in the central cluster and each member cluster. Applies the correct permissions for service accounts. Prepares cube configs for the operator to use to connect the member clusters API servers to manage deployments there and uses these settings to prepare the cluster for your multi-Kubernetes cluster deployment, but doesn't yet deploy it. 
Next, we install the MongoDB Enterprise Kubernetes operator. In this case, we'll be using Helm, but this could also be done using Kube Control. It's important that this is done after the Kube Control plugin is run, as this also sets the stage for the operator install. If you do use Helm, you'll need to add the MongoDB Helm repo first. The install command will install the operator in whichever cluster you're connected to, so it's also worthwhile to set the right Kube Control context to ensure that you're using the right cluster, and it doesn't hurt to be defaulting to the right namespace. The only re real difference between this and a normal operator install is the last line where we set the member clusters that are in use. As with any single cluster enterprise operator setup, you also need to create and apply a config map and secret to connect the operator to the org in Ops Manager or Cloud Manager. This can be done through the UI of either Ops Manager or Cloud Manager, which can generate the files for you at the same time as creating the API key, or you can manually create the key in whichever one that you're using and create the config map YAML and secret YAML yourself. Here's what the files look like with the actual values redacted. Creation of these files only needs to be done once per Ops Manager or Cloud Manager org and can be referenced for multiple deployments. Applying these files can be done using Cube Control Apply. We're now on the home stretch. From here on out, every step is related to a single deployment rather than setup of the operator for multi cluster support. As new namespaces are often used for new deployments, it's important to label the namespaces to ensure that Istio picks them up and enables cross cluster communication. Then we create the service accounts needed on each cluster. This can optionally be done during the stage where we use the Kube Control plugin by using the dash install dash database dash roles flag. But doing it that way means that database roles will only be created for the member cluster namespaces that were set in the parameters for using the Kube Control plugin. It's better to think of this step as being aligned with the creation of a specific deployment rather than the setup of the operator itself, especially as the roles created here are created for a specific namespace and cluster per command, meaning that you need to do this for each individual namespace per each individual cluster. Next comes the prep work needed for enabling TLS in the deployment we're going to create. Tools and processes vary massively, but for this, I'm using a script that uses Search Manager, a Kubernetes tool for managing certificates. This script can be found in the tools slash multi-cluster folder of the repo and does a few things. It installs Cert Manager using Helm into the connected cluster in a new namespace called Cert Manager. Then it uses mkcert, which needs to be installed on the machine from which you run the script, to install a local certificate authority. It downloads the MongoDB certs from mongodb.com, concatenating those into a new CA chain file along with the CA you created. This whole chain goes into a new Kubernetes config map. The script then creates a new issuer resource in Kubernetes. That's a type of custom resource used by Cert Manager to generate certificates. Finally, it creates a certificate resource, which is detected by Cert Manager, which then uses the information within and the issuer it just created to create a new key object for the certificate. Anyone can use the script, though it's tailored towards demoing the quick start and not officially part of our supported product offering. When enabling TLS for the MongoDs, the most critical things are that the name of the certificate must be cert secret prefix dash deployment name dash cert. You set the cert secret prefix in the script. And the certificate must include all the DNS entries for the deployment, again, set within the script including each of the members in the replica set. As a side note, you can also optionally use X509 certificates for user, agent, and internal cluster authentication, but that's a topic for another demo. And finally, we come to the actual deployment creation. For this, we create and apply a MongoDB multi-resource in the central cluster. This custom resource will be picked up by the operator, which now has all the permissions necessary to deploy the replica set members across the clusters used. Here's the one from the quick start, slightly edited, for things like the name of my config map. At the top, we have the name of the deployment, the version of MongoDB Enterprise to use. We have the secret and the config map used to connect to, in this case, Cloud Manager. And we also have the configuration for TLS. 
Down the bottom, we have the cluster specs, which includes the names of the member clusters that we want to deploy onto, as well as the number of members in the replica set that we want to deploy on each individual cluster. This is a super basic configuration for a multi-cluster replica set. Much more configuration is possible as with single cluster deployments and is all documented in the docs. We can deploy it using this apply command. This can take longer than usual for a single cluster deployment. And this takes anywhere from between five to 10 minutes. You can track its progress using cube control get mongodb multi. And if you have more than one, append the name of the specific. In this case, I only have one. And you can see that currently the phase is pending and has been for 20 seconds. You can also check a more detailed status using cube control describe mongodb multi and then the name of the mongodb multi that you've deployed. As I said, this can take between five and 10 minutes. And so we'll pause now and skip ahead. After about 10 minutes, you should see it appear as running. In my case, it actually took closer to 15 and even showed a false positive error in Cloud Manager during the deployment while still waiting for the last agents to come up. It's worth waiting a little longer, especially if there are more replica set members in each cluster. Switching over to Cloud Manager, we can see the deployment here is showing up healthy. And if we switch to the agent view, we can see that from an automation perspective, all the agents are showing up there. And that's it. Your replica set is now up and running. You can undertake further configuration, or you can add a database user and get started with CRUD operations. Thank you.